Welcome to NBA Today, presented by ESPN Bet. Happy Friday, everybody. It is always a good day when the legend, the Hall of Famer, Michael Wilbon, is here. The Thank one and only Malika. Kendrick Perkins joins us with his nice, stylish new shirt. I like that, Perk. I, I'll make, it's a good look you know. on you. Our senior writer, Zach Lowe, is here with us as well. Let's get it started. I'm Malika Anders. Did I say that already? Well, it's been a tough week for the Golden State Warriors. It's been a long week for all of us. So we were left with a little bit more questions, right, than we had answers after watching them play the Thunder last night. This is how it went down. No Steph, no Draymond. He's serving the first of that five-game suspension. Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, they would struggle to pick up the slack in this one, Zach. Andrew Wiggins is 5 of 37 on threes so far this season. This is all it comes down to. If these guys don't make shots, the Warriors are dead on arrival. Well, you know who didn't struggle last night? Shea Gilgis-Alexander. I mean, he was 6 of 21 for him. That's struggling, but everyone else picked up the slack. Isaiah Joe, 7 for 7 from 3. There what? you go. I mean, he did have SGA, did have a game-high 24. Yep, there you go. Clay Thompson continues to struggle. Clay, he just can't quite find his rhythm. It's not there. These are tough shots, too. I mean, he's trying, like, the thing without Steph and Draymond is who else is supposed to shoot? I mean, Moses Woody's played well, but they need Clay to make shots and make some tough ones, too. Andrew Wiggins pulls up. This would be a theme, Zach. Yes, I mean, pull up, miss, pull up, miss, and then uh, a couple of those for Clay. I mean, it's just. This it's is not, the type of analysis we come for in NBA. It's not today. going great. What do you want me to tell you? It's the not going great. sound effect. There's the Isaiah Thunder, Joe. Couldn't Isaiah miss. Isaiah Joe couldn't miss. The Thunder rolls in this one. Dejected Clay Thompson on the bench. Let's take a listen to Steve Kerr after the game. You know, anytime you're in a rut like this, I mean, we're obviously in it right now. Uh, five in a row, five losses in a row. So. Uh, when you're in that state, um, you, there's only one way out, and that's to dig, dig your way out of it, and you got to fight and compete, and, and that's what we have to do. Clay made just one of 10 shots. That 10% Ooh. field goal percentage is the second worst in his career out of the 668 games in which he took at least 10 shots here. So let's welcome somebody who defined their career with elite shooting, Mr. Tim Legler. Tim, what's your diagnosis for what's been going on with Clay? Why is he struggling? Well, there's several things, and I, I think Zach made a great point. First of all, the degree of difficulty on the shots Clay's taking is off the charts. So mm -hmm. when you're struggling and on top of it, you're not getting clean looks, it's exacerbated. But there's also something I think mechanically that I'm seeing with Clay. He's just not finishing his shots the way he normally does. When you see him hit the ground and start backpedaling four steps before the ball gets to the rim, that's a guy that's not shooting the ball in. He's wishing it in. Here again, he's almost at half court by the time that basketball gets to the rim on a very difficult shot. Again, here, look how he's drifting away. When you see Klay Thompson rolling, he's hitting the ground, he's staying in one place, he's staying with his follow through. This isn't what Klay Thompson is doing right now because I think he's pressing so badly between his ears. Look, nobody in this league beats themselves up more yeah. when they're not shooting well than Klay Thompson, right? He squeezes that ball so tight because he has so much pride in what he's doing. But when you combine degree of difficulty on shots, maybe some things mechanically not feeling well, and you don't have Steph and Clay on there to take some of the pressure off so you get better looks, add it all up, and you get a night like last night, which might be the worst offensive game Clay Thompson's ever had. Forget the NBA. I don't think Clay Thompson's ever played the way he did last night offensively, probably his entire life. Yeah, and that, that look that he had on the bench after the game, as the game was concluding, I, I said dejected, just absolutely down. You're totally right, Tim. He is the guy that carries this weight on his shoulders when he can't get it going. And Steph, he was carrying such an offensive load right for this team he was playing great before he got hurt he looks great doing it but do you think Perk I mean how drastic are things going to need to get for the Golden State Warriors here if Clay can't get it going if Andrew Wiggins can't get it going well if Clay can't get it going that's a problem I'm looking at what he's averaging right now 13 points per game do we realize that Clay has an average under 15 since his rookie season and when I look and I, when I watched the game last night I'm looking at the speed and the athleticism of the Oklahoma City Thunder, and I'm watching them guard Clay. And Clay is struggling to get separation to get his shot off. Mm. Now, everything else that's going on within the organization, right? Think about it Clay and the contract extension, and them not being able to agree on terms, or whatever the case may be, it's actually time for Golden State to move on from Clay Thompson. I think this marriage has ran its course. And I think Clay need a fresh start with a new organization. Is he a number one on the contender team? No. Is he a number two on the contender team? No. 
but he is a number three, a third option, and I think he needs a fresh You're start. You're shaking your head, Will Bond. Well, I, you know, even if we just confine some this part of the conversation to him being at Golden State, the two best playmakers on that team were not there. And I know this problem is beyond just last night. But you don't have Steph and you don't have Draymond, and you're not going to have him for a few more games. And Wiggins is not the player we saw in May and June of 22. When he was, you could say, the second best all-around oh, player that sure. Golden State had on a Absolutely. championship run, right? On that finals MVP ballot. Exactly. So you're, you've got more problems there. Now you're asking Clay to Perk's point, to sort of be, I don't know, 2017 Clay? No, that's that's not going to happen. And you got so many stacked teams in the West. I mean, you look, you see how many weapons OKC has right now? You go to Isaiah Joe to hit seven out of seven Ooh. threes last night. And by the way, didn't Giddy hit all three of his threes yeah. last night? You have so many players. When you look at Minnesota, who they just lost to, and you look at OKC and you look at Sacramento, mm -hmm. man, the Warriors are, they don't measure up right now with those guys diminished or absent, Malika. Right to those other teams. But it's just, I mean, we've talked about this. Clay Thompson's going to have a statue outside of, of Chase Center. It feels a little early to talk about trading him to anybody. Yeah, I, and look, I know this, this is a touchy <laughs> situation for you, being from the Bay Area. Ooh. But, it's uh, not even about but, that, Perk. No, I just, I think it's about the fact that we have heard Bob Myers, we have heard Bob Myers players, is not there no more. We have heard I, I, executives I, say that I, Who are you trading him for? No, but I, I mean, I can't. I'm this. That's Bobby Mark, Mark's job when it comes to ESPN. I don't have a trade machine. But when I'm looking at this situation, it's okay. We never thought that we would see Kevin Garnett not in the Minnesota Timberwolves jersey, but we did. We never. Who thought in a thousand years that Shaq would move on from LA and move on from Kobe Bryant? It happens. So D Wade, D Wade left Miami, didn't he? We never thought we would see that happen. It happens. And what I'm saying is we're not talking about Steph Curry here. We're talking about Klay Thompson. And it's okay if they do move on from him. It's okay if Klay move on from Golden State. He still is going to have a statue there. Of course it's okay. People move on all the time. Two things on Klay. Number one, an eruption is coming. He's going to have a game where he hits eight threes, nine threes. It's coming. Number two, Number two, we should at least acknowledge he suffered a torn ACL and a yeah. torn, torn Achilles in back-to-back -back years. He's not the same player. We shouldn't expect him to be the same player. This whole discussion, though, if we're going to sit here and say trade Clay Thompson, you do got to tell me where and for what. He's a $43 million expiring contract who, Perk, you just said, is not playing well. So what am I giving up and what am I getting back for Clay Thompson? It's much harder to actually do it, forgetting the sentiment, forgetting the history, forgetting the statue, just mechanically doing it is difficult. Okay, okay, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I could throw three teams. Hit me, hit right me, now. hit me. The 76ers. For what? When you look at, I mean, you look at Tobias Harris, he have an inspiring contract. They got some picks that they picked up with James Harden. I mean, oh, it's hold not, on. hold on, listen, relax, hold on. It's not the sexiest thing, okay? I understand that. You look at the New York Knicks, right? You look at R.J. Barrett. Would you consider doing that? Would you? I'm, listen, here's the thing. I'm listening. Would you consider doing that? No. What, what the Miami Heat may have to offer. We don't know. Not like, bad. Not okay, bad. the Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler, Bam, and a Klay Thompson. I mean, with an Eric Spolster, again, when you're watching a guy like Klay Thompson, one of the best shooters to ever touch the damn basketball, to ever touch no the question. damn Hall of Fame that is in a slump like he's in. It's more to than just shooting a basketball. It, he's mentally not there. And you can't blame him for the simple fact. Hold on, listen. I got you. When it was time for Jordan Poole to get his extension, he got it with Golden State. When it was time for Andrew Wiggins to get his extension, he got it with Golden State. When it was time for them to re-sign Draymond Green, we couldn't get three days past the, the free agency market and Draymond was penciled in. How do you feel? How do you think Clay Thompson is feeling right now? I'm not disagreeing with any of that. I'm saying just this. You're sitting here telling me how bad Clay Thompson is playing, right? You, you see it. I, we, I, we, all, we all are saying We it. all see it. Okay. We all see it. So if I'm the Philadelphia 76ers, you're telling me for a guy that you're telling me is playing bad, I got to trade you a guy who's playing good 
and a draft pick? Zach. Or if I'm the New York Knicks, I got to trade you a young guy who's averaging 23 points a game and something else? Why? Uh, it hold doesn't, on, it doesn't hold make on, sense. Hold on, hold on. Let me make this, make this make sense then. Last year, Russell Westbrook situation. Was his career on the line when he was with the Lakers? Right? Did he look troubled? When he got to the Clippers, how did he look? Reinvigorated. In a, okay, in a new system with a new coach in a new beginning. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Body language, the head down, everything means something in the game of basketball. It's more to just, just making no shots. No question. No question. But I'm just person. saying if, if I'm these teams, you're trying to sell me on deals that don't make sense for me. Now, there are some deals hey. that make sense, and I'll tell you where it really gets interesting. If you're really desperate, for, if you're the Warriors, you really get desperate and you're willing to attach something to Clay Thompson, a pick, a young player, then you get yourself into some interesting conversations. But they are so far from that, and this right. dude is a legend. And the league isn't going to be making these sort of deals. I do want to get your thoughts on this, Tim Legler, for at least another yeah. month, right, until mid-December. That's when more of the league is going to be available for talks. And mm -hmm. I just cannot see right. a world in which Steph Curry says, yeah, you know what, my splash brother are not playing well enough, oh, that's, fine. That's a good point. What do you think, Tim? No, I think, listen, I think in some cases, that, per Perk's right about the, the way he looks. I mean, this isn't just a slump. This is an incredibly dramatic drop-off from even last year where Clay Thompson averaged 21 points a game. But here's the thing. You got to remember last year, and I don't. I know he did not finish well, particularly at the end. He really struggled in that Lakers series, right? With all the same things we're seeing on the film we just watched and what we're seeing early this year. But he had a three-month stretch during the season where Klay Thompson looked like he did four or five years ago. I mean, he played at that level just last year. Now. Look at him this year. He's clearly, it's all snowballing against him right now, how badly he wants it, uh, and he's forcing the issue too much, and it, that makes his shooting nights even worse. But here's the thing. He is going to find his rhythm, yeah. and this team is so predicated around this style and particularly the way those two players play off of each other. I just think we need to see now a sustained run. Once Steph gets back, Draymond clears the suspension. Let's see a sustained run take us up through, you know, Christmas and beyond. It's the first time and you'll have a worried. much better idea. Is Clay Thompson going to be able to get back to that level mm. that makes them a viable threat? Tim, that, that's what I'm yet. worried about, the sustained run. It's the first time. Like last year, I thought he was going to have it. He did he for got a long off to time. A bad start he led the league in threes. But, but he did. But now we're looking at something. I, I feel like there's an emotional component that Perk is suggesting. There's more here yeah. than just a slump. This is not just a slump. And you've got all these other factors. What is Draymond Green going to be, again, as a secondary playmaker on that team, sometimes a primary? What's Draymond going to be like the rest of the year? We don't know. Clay's dependent on that. You got to have Steph healthy and out there. You got to have Wiggins engaged at a higher level. So this is not just about Clay. That's the great thing about the Warriors. It's an actual team. We're not talking about big twos and big threes and all these individual parts. And we're also not talking about just the analytics of it. The emotional component when you know you're going to have a statue and you may have to move because they may say, wait a minute, at the end of this, as it comes to a we can't afford to guarantee this kind of money. That's what happened with James Harden. That's why he called Daryl Morey a liar, because at some point, Daryl Morey's not going to have that approved by his owner to say, we're going to give this much money to a diminished product. I hate to even use that phrase with Klay Thompson, given how great he is. But what we're seeing now should be cause for more worry than him being in a slump. This ain't a slump. The fact of the matter is strength in numbers has been this team's motto the yes. entire time that they have been a dynasty and they need to be able to rely on those numbers. Right now, that hasn't been the case. I'm still of the belief that their Clay in particular is going to shoot his way out of this. The eruption defense. is coming. Defensively is. is another discussion, is. but if not, 33% of the league can't be traded right now. So we're really not going to see any discussions on any of this for another month or so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna